grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The words for our consideration here this morning are recorded in the Gospel for today from St. John chapter 10, reading just these words at this time. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. In the name of Jesus, dear sheep, in the fold of our Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd Sunday evokes a certain emotion, a certain mood, a certain theme. Have you caught it yet? You can can feel it in the, the, the... melodies and the tunes of the hymns that we sing, this last one, right? Such a peaceful, serene kind of, of mood. Certainly Psalm 23, the words of the hymn we just sang, the words of the psalm for today, paint that peaceful mood, that peaceful emotion, that peaceful state that we have Sheep in the fold of Jesus, our good shepherd. The reading from Revelation that draws our attention to heaven reminds us of the glory and the bliss and the, the, the very fact that one day we'll be before the throne of the Lamb, of that good shepherd. Peace. Comfort, serenity. In our text for today, we see Jesus really continuing a conversation that he had begun with the the teachers of the law two months earlier. There's a little bit of a gap between uh, verse 21 of chapter 10 and, and verse 22. And in the previous section, he reminded them, I lay down my life for the sheep. Lay down my life for the sheep. But what does it mean then for us for whom Jesus has laid down his life to be sheep in Jesus' fold? Jesus defines that for us in the answer as we pick it up here today. That we as sheep and lambs in his fold, first of all, we are safe in his arms. Oh, no, we listen, I'm sorry, we listen to his voice. We illustrated that in the children's message, didn't we? Amidst all of the voices that swirl around in this world, and, and just like here in the congregation, and all of you saying this, 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 right? It's true in our life. Too. Think about all of the places that information comes to you. All of the different ways that the world influences or seeks to influence you and your mindset and your attitude enticing us, tempting us. How easy it is to get information. If you wanted right now, you could open up your phone. Couldn't you? In the middle of this sermon, you could open up your phone, you could see what happened five minutes ago? What did CNN post on their, on their website? What new news story? What's breaking? Right? Maybe it's even vibrating in your pocket because it happens to me. Right? Some of these alerts come in. Well, yesterday, sitting on the, on the table, bzz, bzz, sounded like a text. Nope. CBS Sports, breaking news. I don't remember what it was. Right? over and over and over again, inundated with information. Some of it really, really important. Right? Our spouse's birthday. Hope none of you forgot that it's Mother's Day. Right? Um, our, our phone number, our health history, Those are important bits of information for us to remember. Some of it totally useless, right? Like who is the first draft pick of the 2019 NFL draft? 
Five years from now, who will care? Uh, or who died last week on Game of Thrones? In five or six weeks, who's going to care about that? The season will be over. The series will be over. Nobody will even remember. It's estimated, though, that by the time we reach age 70, our brains will have stored 15 trillion, think about that, 15 trillion bits of information. I'm streaming in from all over. Amidst all of that. Amidst all of that information. All that we take in every day. There's one voice and one source that stands above all the others in importance even above our phone number and our spouse's birthday and the fact that it's Mother's Day and our health information. And it's the voice of our Good Shepherd. And His voice sounds a clear call amidst the cacophony of sounds that reach our ears today. When the news reaches your ears, that you have cancer. It's your good shepherd's voice that says, my grace is sufficient for you. It brings you comfort and peace. The reminder of His constant presence. When broken bones bring unexpected medical bills and a, then a tighter than normal budget for a few months and a wondering how, how this is all going to work out. It's your good shepherd who reminds you, are you, not, are you not much more valuable than the birds of the air whom Jesus also cares for and provides for and feeds? And when the information that reaches your ears is, is the guilt of your own sin, recognition of how you've fallen short of what your God requires, it's your good shepherd who says, I lay down my life for the sheep. We listen to His unfailing voice as it brings us comfort and peace and consolation in this world. We listen to that voice because when the Holy Spirit came to us in our baptism and claimed us as His own, He gave us also a desire to listen to the voice of our Good Shepherd Jesus and to follow Him knowing that He leads us to, what did we say? Streams of living water. And green pastures. Where he feeds and nourishes and strengthens us for life in this world. We listen to that voice of the Good Shepherd because He does care about us. We listen to that voice because we've seen Him Give His life for us. As we listen to that voice, we follow where He leads. His voice doesn't just take us on some mindless path that hasn't been thought out. Whether we read, we sang in Psalm 23, He leads me beside quiet waters. He guides me in paths of righteousness. Left to ourselves, we see the jungles, we see the brambles, we see the, the ditches on every side as we journey through life. And left to ourselves, we're, we're bound to find ourselves in one of those ditches, one of those jungles of, of difficulty. But Jesus reminds us we're not left to ourselves. He is with us, He leads us, He guides us. And we 
follow. In his gospel, Jesus leads us to drink of the waters of life. In his gospel, Jesus gives us food for our souls. In his gospel, he gives us food that lasts, food that endures, food that strengthens us. He shows us his sacrifice for our sins. He shows us his perfect life, which makes that sacrifice meaningful for us. He shows us his glorious resurrection, which seals and guarantees that we too shall rise and one day stand before the throne of the Lamb in heaven. As we listen to his voice and we follow him, we see that we are safe in his arms. For Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. When Satan tempts us and falsely accuses us and tries to get us to take our eyes off of Jesus, our Savior, you and I, rest not on our own strength and power, but on the power that Jesus alone can give. He who gave his life for you is not going to let a wolf come in and carry you away. He's holding on to you. And he says he will never let you go. You are safe wrapped in the robe of his righteousness and in his loving arms. Our Heavenly Father promises an eternity with him forever. And so we ask then, what could possibly go wrong? Why would Jesus say to the Jews of his day, to God's chosen people, you are not my sheep? Were they not God's hand-selected group? The ones through whom he promised to send a Savior? Were they not set apart for that holy purpose of bringing that Savior of the whole world into this world? He nurtured them. He drove out nations before them as they entered into the promised land by the strength of His hand. If people are safe and secure in the arms of the Good Shepherd, why are these people not part of it? You are not my sheep. Why are so many today not part of that fold, that flock of Jesus. And what does it mean for us? We need to be crystal clear about that, don't we? The problem is not in Jesus. The problem is not that Jesus' sacrifice paid for some people's sins and not others. The problem is not that Jesus didn't want those people to be part of his fold, of his flock. Problem rests with sinful mankind. Think about it. Time and time and time again throughout the history of the Old Testament, God sent one prophet after another to call his people to turn them away from sin, from the wolves that were driving them away, trying to devour them. Time and time again, he sent a prophet to call them to repentance. And so Jesus comes into the world and finally he too has to say what? How often I have longed to gather your children together. So a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you, you were not willing. 
The problem was not with God. The problem was not with the prophets God sent. The problem was with the people. Today, too. The problem lies not with Jesus, but with the people. And Jesus' voice is no longer of importance to us. And we no longer listen, hear, and follow it. Then we are destined, too, to be consumed by the wolves of this world. To be deafened by that cacophony of sounds that comes before us every day. All of the other information and be driven still further away until finally we are lost forever. When we turn aside from Jesus, from faithfully, regularly listening to His voice, hearing what He says and following Him, when we turn down the volume, Stop coming to church. Stop joining together around His Word in Bible class or in our our own homes in family devotions. We're making a dangerous choice. Not a failure of Jesus or a lack of His power. It's a failure of our part. We push away from Him and reject Him and the safety and security and the peace that He alone provides. That brings us full circle, doesn't it? What it means to be a sheep in Jesus' fold is to understand the dangers of life in this world and to listen to the voice of our Good Shepherd following what He says, enjoying the safety we find in His arms. Amen.